It's all about perspective, and I'm going to show you how to use forced perspective to improve the scenes on your model railroad layout on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more model railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure and subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. In the past, I have made numerous videos about different techniques for building scenery that looks realistic and makes your trains stand out in a way that really makes them look fantastic. But one thing we haven't discussed on this channel before is how to compose a scene. Well, today I want to talk to you about one principle that helps you to compose scenes that make them look very realistic, but also creates a sense of depth that makes it look like it really is a part of the real world. And that is the principle called forced perspective. Now, by definition, forced perspective is the use of any technique that makes objects look larger or smaller or closer or farther away than they really are. We see this all the time in photography. For example, whenever someone creates the illusion that they are holding an object that is larger than one that they could really hold, like this photograph that I created in my own backyard today. We see this famously with people looking like they're leaning against or holding up the Leaning Tower of Pisa. We see those pictures all over the internet. Now, forced perspective can work in one of two ways. It can either use distance to create a, an illusion that changes the sense of sizes of an object, or it uses different sizes object to create the illusion of distance. The picture that I showed you is one that uses distance to change the look and create the illusion of different size. But on our layouts, we want to use the size of objects in order to create that illusion that they're further away and thus that our scenes are deeper than they are. I'm going to show you four different scenes on my layout today. Now, three of the four are very much incomplete, but they're far enough along that you can get the sense of how I've used force perspective to create a sense that they are deeper than they are, that objects are further away than they are, and it helps make you feel like the layout and the railroad is in a space in the real world and makes them look very, very realistic. So let's head on over to the layout and we'll take a look at some of these scenes. Take a moment to check out our sponsor, Midwest Model Railroad. They have a great line of model railroad equipment and supplies and some of the best customer service around. Their website has a real-time inventory system, they offer some of the best prices in model railroading, and they ship in one business day. Check them out at MidwestModelRR.com, link in the description. This is the first scene that I want to show you. And my first example of forced perspective, in this case, I have this little church scene. And as you can see, it is close to the backdrop here, just on the west end of Wichita Falls Yard. And just at the first glance uh, at this particular angle and zoom, looks like a, a, a nice scene and could be convincing to be an in-scale scene. What I want you to notice is, however, that this is actually a Z-scale church building and automobiles. And just to show you the difference, this is a in-scale two-story house. And you can see there that the door on the in-scale house is almost as tall as a full story on the in-scale church building. And then also uh, here is an in-scale car to compare to those Z-scale cars. So, so you can see there the difference in the sizes whenever they're placed side by side. But let me zoom out and show you what this Z-scale structure towards the back of my layout does for creating a sense of distance in this particular scene. Here I am zoomed out in that scene and uh, what you're seeing in the lower part of your screen is just right at the fascia at the front. The actual depth of this scene is, is only about 18 inches. But as you see the locomotive in the foreground and then of course the hills that will all be covered with uh, a lot of scenery material and trees, um, the Z-scale structure kind of gives a sense of distance because of its smaller size. If I were to put uh, a structure like this house in the foreground, you get the sense of the fact that your mind, because it assumes the, the relative size of the house and the church to one another, 
you know, having the larger structure in the front, the smaller structure in the back, creates that sense of distance. It makes your mind believe that it's further away than it really is. And if I take this scene, which is my plan, and um, I were to fill this hill with trees, uh, some larger trees here in the front, like so, and then uh, some puffball trees and such uh, on the hill behind uh, that would give you the sense that this church is on a hill and you would be viewing it over the treetops from where you're standing. Uh, it's going to create a very nice scene that makes the church look far away and makes this particular part of my layout look much deeper than it really is. Here is a second scene where I've used a Z-scale structure in order to give a, a sense of distance. Now in this particular location, a little different situation, uh, this is actually an area that is recessed well back on the lower deck of my layout uh, underneath the valley that I call Beggar's Canyon. And when you're standing at the layout, this area towards the back of the uh, backdrop is not even visible. But I wanted to create something of interest back there for the times when people are down at eye level for them to see. So again, I'm using a Z-scale structure to create distance. And, and another principle that really is helpful as you're trying to create a sense of distance in your scenery is to remember that it always creates distance when you have to look up into a scene. Now, in this case, unless you're sitting down or you're really getting low, it's hard to be looking up into the scene because it's so low and you're kind of looking back underneath the upper deck, but you see that I've set a piece of foam back there that I ultimately will carve into a hill to, to raise this up to at least give it some sense that it is higher than the foreground scenery and creates a realistic sense of distance. I actually have two more Z-scale warehouses similar to this, and I'm going to be putting all of them along the backdrop back here. And you see as I create the hill, I'm planning to use trees to again partially obscure them and create that sense of distance. And again, as I zoom out and you see the end scale train in the foreground, and I, I know it's out of focus, but you can also see the end scale bridges that are right up near the backdrop. It really gives a real sense that this is something that is happening in the real world, but is far off in the distance and really gives a sense of depth to, to the layout in this particular area. Here's a third scene where I'm using forced perspective to create that sense of distance. Uh, and I'm really going to like this scene when it's done. Uh, this looks like kind of just a random rock stuck out of the hillside with a car sitting on it. But if you've ever been to the Colorado Rockies, you're familiar with shelf roads that travel through the mountains. And uh, I wanted to create that illusion here. So I created this little rock shelf and that's a Z scale car that is sitting on top of it. And I think you can get the sense that as I plant some trees, pine trees on each side to hide the two uh, ends of the rock outcropping and then trees down below so that um, so that you'll actually just see the car through the tops of the trees. It's going to create a great illusion of a car traveling along a shelf road there. And now once again I'll zoom out here and let you see what this looks like in the uh, context of the whole scene. And here I've zoomed out so that you can see kind of the whole scene. Again, the bottom of your screen is right along the fascia and you see the train uh, running across the trestle there. Uh, the valley to the left, which is Beggar's Canyon. And of course you see my shelf road right up here. And again, as we get some trees planted in front of that, gonna create a very nice convincing scene of something that's happening in, happening in the far distance well behind the focal point, which are the trains on the track. Now I've got one more scene that I want to show you, and this is actually one that is a little closer to complete, so I think you'll enjoy seeing it. This is perhaps my favorite of my forced perspective scenes. This is in the mountain area that you often see right behind me as I do the intros and closings to my videos. And this little cabin uh, sitting up in this high valley in the mountains, and I especially like the fact that over to your left, you see uh, the Sasquatch kind of winding his way, wandering his way up towards the cabin. In this case, the Sasquatch is an in-scale figure. He is the same size as an in-scale human figure, but the cabin, which you'll notice 
A is sitting just a little bit over the hill, which helps create that illusion of distance. It's actually a, a Z scale structure once again. And I'm gonna zoom out here as far as I can from this uh, particular perspective. And then I'm gonna move my camera so you can really get a sense of how this fits into the whole scene. So first, as we zoom out here, there you get a sense of the cabin up on the hill. Of course, the, the painted mountain scene in the background and the clouds, the trees, really give a sense of, of distance there. Uh, now let me get a different perspective so you can really see the whole scene and see how it really fits perspective-wise uh, into the whole scene. And here is a wider shot of the full scene, and you can see kind of in the upper right-hand portion of your screen the cabin that uh, is well off in the distance. You can just see the Sasquatch wandering his way up. You can also see, of course, the trains in the lower foreground and really a beautiful scene as both looking up into this scene and the forced perspective really give you a sense that this is a scene where you're looking deep into the mountains into the very far distance and really creates both a sense of realism and a sense that this scene is part of a larger world. So that gives you a sense of how forced perspective can really create a sense of distance, of space, and of realism on your layout. And these are some things that you may want to consider as you design the layout that you're building, or as you are thinking about how to build your scenes in order to create greater realism. I hope you'll take that forced perspective idea, try it out on your own layout, and see if you don't like the improvement that it makes to the look of your scenes. Well, if you enjoyed this video, here's a link to some more scenery videos I know you're going to enjoy as well. Also, take a moment to look in the description down below where you're going to find a link to A Modeler's Life, a podcast by Lionel Strain, where you learn not just about model railroading, but about the people involved in model railroading. You're also going to find a link to my Amazon page, my Amazon pick of the week, and tons of other great links that I know you'll enjoy and benefit from. Be sure and check those out. Well, if you'd like some more Model Railroad content right now, check out the videos linked on your screen. And be sure and join me each Tuesday as I bring you even more great Model Railroad videos, and I look forward to seeing you then. Tim, Lizzie?